Do you think the Earth is flat? The Earth is flat. Please, the Earth is flat. The Earth is flat. Of course, the Earth is flat. The Earth is flat. The world is flat. How do you know the Earth is flat? Balls. The whole globe Earth model, in my opinion, it wasn't devised by men. It was devised by the devil who wants to deceive everyone. But NASA tells you that stars are billions of light years away. NASA in Hebrew means to deceive. When we approached a professor of Hebrew at the University of Cambridge, we were given the following translation. So while the root of the verb to deceive is similar, this frequently used translation is in fact incorrect. And NASA in Hebrew actually means to lift. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me they were wrong? It can't be. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold up a second. Let's go back. Yeah. It's rewind time. Early models of the Earth would have depicted it as being flat. Or at least not not being flat. But this was because there was no real perspective on what the Earth could be. Since early Greek times, people have been discovering and confirming that the Earth is a sphere. As more and more civilizations came to the same conclusion, eventually, there was no real argument to be had. However, after hundreds of years of this basically just being accepted, a man by the name of Samuel Burley Robotham decided to challenge the idea with some experiments. Publishing a 16-page paper under the pseudonym Parallax, which is a dope pseudonym by the way, he used a simple experiment to try and disprove the globe Earth. Simply put, a 10 mile long straight canal, a boat, and a telescope. He claimed that by the time the boat reaches the other end, it should disappear beyond the horizon. He did not experience this, and therefore came to the conclusion that the curvature of the Earth was in fact a lie. I'm paraphrasing a little bit here. I didn't necessarily read up on all of the complicated details, but I think I got the general premise. I think, and so did he, Perhaps we're both falling victim to the Dunning-Kruger effect. Paraphrasing again, with Wikipedia by my side, the Dunning-Kruger effect is a cognitive bias, showing the correlation between somebody's ability or understanding with how they perceive their ability or understanding to be. The distribution curve shown mostly speaks for itself, and it explains all sorts of phenomenon, such as how football fans are so ready to give criticism to professional athletes. THIS IS GARBAGE! Even subconsciously, we experience the Dunning-Kruger effect throughout our lives. Even despite having an awareness of the Dunning-Kruger effect, I still can't help but fall victim to it myself. One case that we will examine is my time playing video games. Okay. Okay, ignore my teammate. Sometimes we come across weird people in online games. But, back to the point. I have been playing computer games for a very long time. I first got my little handheld Game Boy 17 years ago. And yet, to be humble, I'm still kinda trash. So how has this happened? Granted I've improved, but how have I not become a pro yet? How am I not playing in tournaments? Or at the very least being second from bottom or better on the leaderboard? Well, truth be told, I think there is some similarity between myself and the guys over in the Flat Earth Society. See, for all of the time that I've been playing games up until recently, I've been relying on my senses and the environment around me to learn and come to conclusions. The problem is, just like with the Flat Earth Theory, it's very easy to come to the wrong conclusions. I've played over a thousand hours of CSGO, and yet both my accuracy and my game sense was quite poor. However, recently, a similar game came out. This time around, I decided to take it a little more seriously. I decided to focus on self-improvement, and I decided to do practice mode on a regular basis. That's right, practice mode, standing and shooting at targets. I had finally progressed far enough through the Dunning-Kruger distribution to accept the fact that I needed to train and practice if I wanted to actually be any good. Instead of relying on my own time spent in games, I decided to seek out help. I looked at online videos describing the sensitivity, and reduced my mouse sensitivity by at least half. I sought out videos focused on strategy and improving game sense, and would watch the professionals play their games instead of those making content for entertainment purposes. Just like a flat earther enrolling in a university course in physics. To understand the complicated science that goes behind the globe earth model and how we came to that conclusion, I decided to put in the work to know. 
I didn't need the flat earth theory to start going down this path. As I've grown up and matured, I have recognised that in order to actually be good at something, time needs to be invested, not just in playing, but in practising. Perhaps I give the flat earth theory a bit more credit than it's due, but nonetheless, here we are. Granted, I don't claim to be good at video games, it's a process of improvement, and there's still a long road ahead of me, so don't come into the streams expecting me to ace.